Welcome back YouTube, I'm Adam Johnson and this is NFA Review Channel. Today we have a review powered by Silencer Shop. They sent us the new Sig Sauer SRD45. Uh, if you've been a subscriber for my channel for any amount of time, you know that I already reviewed the SRD9 back in November of 2017. So, but I'm gonna structure today's review as if you know nothing about the SRD series suppressors. We're gonna cover everything from what it's made from, what the inside looks like, and then we're gonna hit that range and see just what it sounds like. Let's go ahead and open the box. All right, just like the SRD9, in a nice box actually and it comes with everything you need manual little suppressor sock and what I really loved about the SRD 9 is it comes with two pistons straight from the factory so this is going to ship with the uh, 16 by 1 uh, left hand that's going to be for your HK uh, tactical 45 and then it comes with the uh, 0.578 by 28 so that's going to be for your Glock 21 your uh, SIG P220, and then we have the takedown tool, as well as a fixed spacer. We'll get uh, to that in a minute on why you would need that, but that is what comes in the box. Let's go ahead, before we get to any of this stuff over here, let's go ahead and cover the specifications. The SRD45 comes in in an overall length of 7.9 inches, a diameter of 1.38 inches, and it weighs 13.8 ounces. Now the tube is a really strong grade 9 titanium, and the baffles are all 17.4 heat treated stainless steel, uh, which makes this can full auto rated, so that's pretty cool. As far as the decibel reduction is concerned, uh, this did meter in at 133 when shot dry with 230 grain ball on a uh, P220. Um, so as far as 9 millimeter, I don't have any numbers for the 9. Uh, these days, I'm not as concerned with numbers as long as it's hearing safe. Uh, I'm more concerned with, as you know, the tone. And if you watch the shooting portion of today's review with quality headphones, like I always tell you to, uh, you should get a really good uh, representation of what this sounds like. I typically like shooting 45 cans more than 9 based purely on the fact that the lower pressure has a, has a lower tone frequency and most human ears, mine included, enjoy that lower frequency. Now the caveat is 45 and the lower frequencies, since the frequencies are lower, travel over distance further. Okay, uh, 9 has a higher frequency pitch and uh, that means that it might be more annoying to the shooter, maybe not to onlookers, but the sound drops off quickly over time and distance, whereas this might carry a little further. That's why you guys can hear some thug dropping mad beats in his car a mile down the road because he's got two 15 inch subwoofers behind his head. That lower frequency travels further. There's a reason why you can't hear his tweeters blasting his eardrums out. Little side information there. All right, now that we got the specs out of the way, let's go ahead and take this bad boy apart. Okay, to take down the SRD45, use the plastic takedown tool I mentioned earlier, which won't mar it up. Take your front cap off. I guess I should have used the tool a little longer. If memory serves me correctly from the SRD9, these threads shouldn't be that deep, and they are not. Once that is out, if you have a steady hands, you can just turn this tube over and take the tube off of the stack. Uh, sometimes I recommend taking the booster assembly off first though, in case that first baffle is bound up with crud, you might need to just use your finger to push it out. But since this can is new and greased up, I uh, shouldn't have any problems, but I'm gonna take it off anyway, just for the sake of the video. Some long threads on that bad boy. And you got your piston, your spring, and your booster assembly. Set that over to the side. And let's play some Jenga here. Got it. So here we have the tube and your baffle stack. 
Let's get right down into the baffle stack. Immediately I can see that they improved upon the SRD9. If memory serves me correctly, the SRD9, I haven't shot it in a while, it's in the safe, used a modified K baffle. Uh, but it had exposed sides, meaning if you had a uh, long time between cleanings, you would get buildup on the interior wall here of the suppressor tube, making removal of the baffle stack a little difficult. Uh, so this though uses encapsulated baffle stack system that everyone's pretty much going to in some shape or form. And what that's gonna do is all that, all that gas as the bullet's passing through with all the carbon and lead is sticking to the inside of these walls, not this wall. So you can go longer between cleanings and it's just a lot simpler. As far as cleaning is concerned, since this is 17.4 stainless steel, you can just drop these in an ultrasonic cleaner and you're good to go. Set it and forget it. Just follow the directions. Uh, I usually just do half water, half purple power, something like that. Throw it in there for a couple cycles, take them out, dry them off, oil them, and you're good to go. Do not put the tube in there. Do not put the front cap in there or the booster housing. These are parts that will not survive in that environment, whether it be the type of metal they're, they're made from or the anodizing will not last. As far as the piston, it is a 17.4 uh, stainless that was blasted to give it a nice silver matte finish. Uh, the spring, you should be able to put it in there, but I've never really had to, guys. The springs don't really build up that bad. If they look cruddy, it still works fine. That's pretty much it as far as cleaning and maintenance on the stack. Once it is good to go. You have 10 baffles here. So I'll show a little close up B-roll action here. They're gonna see these two notches. Uh, kind of like a dater hole on a modified K baffle. 50% of them in the suppressor were facing one way and then the other half were facing the other way. So it has a 180 degree orientation with those holes. So you're gonna wanna assemble it the same way. Now there's no alignment tab, so you're gonna to have to do it just by kind of looking at it. I've already aligned them. So I have five and then five for a total of 10 baffles. To ensure you have repeatable point of impact shift after cleaning and maintenance on the suppressor, I would make it a point to line up that notch in this baffle design with the writing on the outside of the tube. And I'll explain why more in just a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and line that up with the writing. Get on there. Okay, we're gonna flip it. So that writing is lined up with the tube. Where's my takedown tool? And we'll go ahead and secure it down. I did not read the manual on the foot pounds you're supposed to apply here. I'm just gonna go ahead and say snug is tight enough and not get too crazy with it. We don't need to go full pie pie on this bad guy. All right, so that's good to go. Some of you may already know how to adjust point of impact on a pistol suppressor, but I'm gonna go ahead and cover it for those of you that don't. So what usually happens is because of the differences in how the gas flows behind the projectile as it leaves the can, it will actually veer the tail end of the bullet a certain direction. So. You could put this on your SIG 220 and it normally shoots point of aim 25 yards unsuppressed. You throw this sucker on there, it's nice and quiet, but now it's shooting down and to the left repeatedly, same spot, and you're like, what the heck? You can adjust that with a suppressor. So if you look closely at the piston here, you'll see you have splines that kind of orientate like the face of a watch. Those interact with splines on the inside of the blast chamber. So what that means is you could actually orient the tube of the suppressor in multiple positions to finely tune that gas flow behind the bullet so your point of impact is not only repeatable but not far off from where you are unsuppressed. I've never really had a problem with a suppressor not being close enough after making that adjustment. So that's why I say always line it up with the writing on the tube because then you can repeat it again and again. Looking at this gun, the engraving right now is at the very top. Now by luck it might just shoot point of aim right where we're shooting unsuppressed. Nine times out of ten it will not. So to fix that you pull forward on the piston compressing the spring inside and you rotate it one notch over. Do a couple shots, find out where it's going, 
it's not going where you want, rotate it another notch. Try it again. You'll eventually go all the way around and you'll be able to find exactly where this can likes to be to, with the baffle setup that you have inside. Which is why, again, I stress it is important when you clean it to make sure you orientate the last five stacks to line up with the engraving on the tube. Okay? And you shouldn't have any issues at all. So, well, I think that pretty much covers the studio session today. I want to pack up here, throw these back in the safe, and get out to the range. We're definitely bringing this beautiful SIG 220 Combat. I never get to shoot it enough, and it is a really great gun. So we'll grab this and I'll choose a maybe one nine millimeter. I'll snag some pistons from the SRD9 kit and we'll shoot some nine through this thing and see what that sounds like, what the tone sounds like. Should sound a little deeper than it will out of a normal nine millimeter tube, but there's only one way to find out. Let's hit the range. Well, everybody at home, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, got some side profile shots and the usual 75 yard downrange profile. And I'm sorry, guys, I fudged up. What? I'm sorry, I fudged up, guys. I forgot the half by 28 piston for the uh, SRD9. I was actually packing up the studio at home, heading out to the range. I got a phone call from one of my exhibitors at next weekend shoot, got sidetracked, drove all the way out here forgot to have by 28 because what I wanted to do is show profile and downrange scenes for a 9mm pistol and carbine and a 45 pistol and carbine that way you get a good well-rounded video uh, unfortunately it was out of the question for me to drive an hour back and forth uh, two hour delay today to get that piston so 
but I'm sure it sounds great on the Ruger PC carbine that I was going to bring out because uh, it sounded really good on the Mark 25. Like, I cracked a smile good. On the 220, I did get a little bit of back pressure, a couple of rounds. I got some peppering of unburnt granules, uh, and then it kind of went away. Which, when I filmed the next scene for the carbine, I thought I was going to get some port breech pop due to a higher pressure or a higher back pressure can design. That wasn't the case. I was actually shocked that I didn't get any port pop, really. This, this can has a really interesting profile. The sound, while shooting 45 is obviously louder than 9, the sound's happening like 20, 25 yards downrange of the shooter. Really neat sound to it. On the 9mm, it's totally, you know, magical backyard quiet. Huge shout out to ETS Group. I just filmed a, a full review for them. If you haven't seen it, go check out my channel very cool loaders, intuitive, easy to use. I did add a couple drops of RAN CLP oil today. Uh, I was using the loaders in between scenes because I'm out here solo today, changing adapters, moving the camera, getting focus points, loading mags. Um, it helped speed things up for me today, so kudos to them. And definitely, I mean, it was like 50% easier to load the pistol mags with a couple drops of oil uh, on the plunger and the slider. So. I guess I should have uh, heeded their advice in the manual, in my review, but I digress. Another huge shout out to Freedom Munitions. That 250 grain hush is pretty cool stuff, guys. Check it out on their website. It is a thumper. You can probably hear it pretty crystal clear on today's video if you watch this video with quality headphones. And then the 165 grain hush needs no introduction. It's Hollywood quiet. If you have not checked out my shooting event, it is next weekend. April 14th, 2018 at Leesburg, Florida. We have over 20 companies coming out for 30 bucks. It pays for your range time from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And it includes all your ammo and raffle tickets. And we're giving away about 51 guns and silencers. It's gonna be a great day. We're gonna have cars to shoot up, flamethrowers. We're gonna have APCs rolling around with mounted belt-fed 50s. It's gonna be a good time. You don't wanna miss it. We're gonna have you know, facilities to use a restroom. We're gonna have three food trucks. It's gonna be a great time. Don't miss it. I'm gonna put the link below uh, so those of you that haven't heard about it till just now can go ahead and click going RSVP. Thanks for watching today's review, guys. All my patrons on Patreon, you guys are awesome. Uh, today is the fifth. Tonight I'll be giving away those, I believe we're up to $600 gift cards now. So to my lucky winner circle winner. So. Uh, thanks again for all your support of my channel, putting all your money to good use, upgrading my gear, and getting myself out here so I can film more reviews for all you guys at home. Uh, until next time, make sure to click that like and subscribe button, follow on Facebook, Instagram, Full30, and YouTube for the time being. YouTube, you cannot stop us. We are not going anywhere. I'll see you next time.